and welcome to How Good is the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. I didn't have any patience to wait for midnight to arrive just to record a voiceover, so here's Moner talking for me. For testing comparison, the 7700X has been reverted to stock settings, but the GPU is still undervolted. These results are mostly 4K, a bit of 1440p, because you aren't really buying this chip for budget 1080p gaming. In the first game, we have BF2042. Little to no difference, but the power usage has been shaved off. I think Minecraft likes the thick cache. Set at 32 chunks of render, the GPU is fast asleep. We were expecting some kind of difference in RimWorld, but with around 100 raiders, there is not much difference. TPS would be a more useful info, but I forgot about that. Craftopia shows improvement on the stacked cache as well. It's not a representative for all indie games, so take this information as you will. Company of Heroes 3 at 4K does not show much improvements as we are GPU bound, which is good. Men of War never changes. Assault Squad 2 with 20 German Tigers is now playable with the stacked cache. The sequel is releasing soon, so we're going to check that out in the future, I suppose. Finally, GTA Online. You would think that a 10-year-old game would run easily, but online is a different type of beast. Your performance will vary by the size of the lobby, and there is definitely a favorable result using this chip. Who is this chip for? For those who are playing 1440p with an RTX 4090, players who enjoy indie games that depend on the CPU and simulator hobbyists. Right now, Massive Corner has some deal-breaking bundles that make this chip not worth getting. $299 bundle for starters, and $599 bundles for both Intel and Ryzen if you want to dabble in a bit of productivity and mostly gaming. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please subscribe. If you didn't like the voiceover and the like button is grayed out, hit the like button twice. Have a good one, gamers.